hello uh this is a special video i you may or may not know i have a podcast called run the layers with creative bobby that would be me and basically it's about creativity how people use it what people think about when they think of creativity and how we can encourage each other to be more creative so i recently started season four of the podcast uh, you can find it on all podcast platforms from the layers with Craig Bobby. Uh, this is the first episode of season four where I'm talking with Randy Hill. So just giving you a sneak peek on this channel. And if you want more, make sure to get on your podcast platform of choice, whether it be Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever, and subscribe. And please leave a five star review. Here you go. Are you good enough to do that? Mm hmm. Is that your is that your wheelhouse? Mm. You went to school and got two degrees to be an engineer, and you want to be an animator? Mm. It's like the constant. Like it's, I don't want to say berating of yourself in your head, but you know that that secondary question of yeah, I want to do this, but do you? Welcome back to Run the Layers. I'm your host, Creative Bobby, and on this episode, I have a fellow creative screenwriter, future superstar, Randy Hill. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we do on here. I gas people up. I gas people up. Gas my friends up. My pe my people that are creative and on the creative grind. And you know, I'll be seeing your Instagrams where you you're giving like a little screenshot, a little 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 tease into what you're writing and stuff like that and stuff like that. So I'm I'm here to encourage and support and elevate you. So Randy, how are you doing this fine evening? I'm good, Bob. I am good. Appreciate you for having me out here. And listen, I had to have you out here because you know I'm I'm continuing my mission of trying to have all my creative friends, you know, on this podcast, kind of talk creativity from all different walks of life. So I'm going to start kick it right off with you. When you think of creativity, what does that mean to you? When you sent me that, I was like, hmm, how do we go about this? But in terms of creativity in my head, it is literally the core of the individual. Mm -hmm. It's how you think, how you walk, how you talk, how you speak, how you, how you dance, how you dress. Your whole viewpoint of life is based off of creativity. So those that write, those that shoot film, those that play music, those that do anything in the creative realm, it's built off of how you are as a person. No, no two people's creativity in whatever form or fashion, whether you're a musician, a writer, a drawer, a painter, an actor, your creativity is based off of who you are. No two people will be alike, regardless. Even two twins that are creatives, you'll never be the same creative. I like that and definitely I definitely agree with that because and that's one thing I try to like get people to understand like people are like well I can't do x y and z or other people are already doing it, it was like nobody's going to do it like you do it because nobody can be like you said nobody can be creative like you so I want you know part of this podcast and just my general you know outlook is to try to like encourage people in my sphere of influence to to go for those things and to really realize that so how how are you using creativity in your life so at first i suppressed it like i highly suppressed it um but it ended up becoming an itch that you could not scratch so uh i'm an engineer during the daytime my day job is engineering telecom firm um it pays the bills but it's it's a job not a passion Mm. And it was a question that my boss had posed to us earlier in the year. It was like, is this is this job or where you work at PMA, is it a job, a career, or a passion? And I had to look at it and was like, if there was something that was beyond job in the other direction, that is where it would fit. <laughs> but in terms of how I use the creativity throughout my daily life, my job pays my bills, my creativity also funds my pocket, but is a way that I get all of my issues and anxiety and frustrations at my job out on paper. Mm. I write about the things that I've experienced at work or experienced in life. It's become both a muse and a, and a passion piece in itself. Um, and not just writing, I also shoot film and I also do photography and videography. So it's just like, if I can pour in whatever direction I can, it's there. Like matter of fact, tomorrow I took off of work so that I can go do a photo shoot. So it's just like, I'm going to do my toss ups where I can and fit in creativity where it fits. And the goal is to eventually not be an engineer and just do creativity full time. 
Ah, yes, the engineer life. What could have been, but I didn't do. <laughs> oh, you're not missing anything, man. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, I'm a, I'm a, I was a chemistry major, got my degree and everything, and right up until walking on that stage, I was like, you know what? Around senior year, I'm sorry, around around the time where the chemistry classes were less, but the actual engineering classes got up, and I was like, oh, I don't think I really like this engineering thing like I thought I did. I think I like the chemistry stuff was like, oh, I'm killing in that, but like that engineering piece. So it's definitely and definitely going to a college, you know, the illustrious North Carolina A&T State University. You know, we're worried about you know we're big on engineering, but it's like it's just interesting how. I went there for that specific purpose and also to be in the band, be keeping it real. I was yes. <laughs> trying to be in that band, but like- It was a checkbox. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a big checkbox, but it was like the people that I met and the experiences I had there helped shape, you know, what I would become, you know, as far as like graphic design. And I met people that taught me stuff about that and stuff, but it can really be a challenge to make that leap to kind of like you said like you were running from it for a while and I feel like I can definitely relate with that because it's like yeah I can I can do graphic design but I can't I can't do it for a living that was my mentality of that's why I was doing it on the side for so long but I was like I can't make a career out of this so there's no reason to pursue it same, same thing. thing I just wish I had my epiphany when you did <laughs> my epiphany didn't come until degree number two <laughs> so First degree, cool. I'm gonna go back to school, do it again. I got my second degree in 2019, and literally the month afterwards, when the epiphany really struck, I'll never forget the day, it was June 23rd, 2019. It was like dusk outside. I was watching a film and I was like, I don't wanna do this no more. And it was literally like instantaneous, the switch was flipped. Engineering has been cool, but I'm done with this. <laughs> and it, it just slowly graduated into. I'm going to try something. I'm going to do something. All right, let's figure out how to push this all the way out the way. And of course, the pandemic helped, but that's a whole nother piece in itself. That's real. That's real. So when you're thinking about creativity, you think about the creations of other people, including yourself. So what's your favorite creation by someone else? And what's your favorite creation by you? Okay. Okay. <sighs> That was, oh, when you said that, I said, why do I have to be tormented with figuring out one person's <laughs> creation out of all of these things that have made out of here? And I was just like, if I had to sum up a creation, just one piece by somebody else that I would pick, it would be the movie Moonlight mm. by Barry Jenkins, written and directed. Um, it's, it's a muse. It, is the, it has the structure, the storytelling, the tonal shifts. It's everything that I always go back to in terms of writing it. Like, am I hitting something? Am I missing something? Does this feel right? Does it give me moonlight vibes? Mm -hmm. it, told, it told Black stories by Black people in the most genuine format possible. So I was just like, that. It, it's everything. Mm. Nice. Nice. What about for you, though? What's, what's your favorite creation by you? For me, it was hard to make a decision on that, too um I like I like a lot of my work and then at the same time I like I, I hate to say it but it's the truth I like it but after I look at it enough it's just like because <laughs> you see you see the info you you live you lived with it so you're gonna see the imperfections that somebody who hasn't been living with it they're gonna be like oh that's great but if you really dig into it, they're gonna be like, nah, I could have done this better. This could have been, yeah, I should have done this. So yeah, I, I get I get that. But if there's one thing, it's a script that I just, I finished the pilot. I haven't finished the whole series. The series is getting mapped out and I'm about to pitch. So that, that script that I just finished, I worked on it from Epiphany Day until I finished the pilot like a, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So that piece is my, my pride and joy, my baby that's getting pitched soon. Mm. So um, I've been putting together the pitch document and all of the work that needs to be done to actually go and pitch. So we will see. I point pinpointed where I'm going, who I need to talk to. I just got to finish the document and just go and do it. 
that is incredible. You out here writing and pitching and doing all this stuff. Got photo shoot over here. Like, so this ain't on the list of questions. I'm just asked this. Do you, do you, do you feel like you spend enough time actually appreciating where you are and how far you've come? Cause I know it's like a lot of people, myself included, we get so caught up, in, especially like you're in a creative industry. So you're like, it's always the next thing. It's like, it's always the next step. Okay. I, I'm trying to build this big building. So I need to lay this brick and I got time to celebrate that. Cause I got to put this other brick on there. Do, do you spend enough time, like really digging into like, wow, I really did that. That's what's up. It might come once, maybe once or twice in a year where you look and it was like, wow. I I did something or a plethora of things that I said I would do. And then eventually the moment passes and it's just like, well, you still got to do X, Y, Z, alpha, beta, gamma, one, two, three, four, and five. You did none of this, but you sure you did that, whatever. Move on to the next piece. That's not important now. So it's a point in time where you think about it and be like, ah, but I don't want to relish it in too bad because there's still more things to do. I get it. It's, it's, it's definitely a balance between okay you're on a creative pursuit so you're trying to be like okay let me let me stop and smell the roses but i can't do it too long because there's still more stuff i gotta i gotta learn it's still more sniff the pedal and drop the rose yeah <laughs> essentially <laughs> it's like cool here we go Ooh, a new toy but forget that toy there's more toys over there <laughs> so real that's so real <laughs> i relate to that too much i relate to that too much so with that what is something that you've wanted to create but haven't yet and what's stopping you from doing it okay so with this one i i had a conversation with one of my live brothers about about a month ago and i was just like wow it's something it was an ad matter of fact it was an ad that popped up on youtube for something called blender i know you work with graphic design i'm not sure if you heard about this i want to say i've heard of it yeah so Blender is a animation creation app. Um, I think, and, it's, and the crazy part about it is it's free. So I was like, hmm, animation, there's a plethora of anime in Japanese and in English. And very few of those anime encompass people to look like us. Mm. So what if I, that write scripts, just go ahead and make my own anime? It can't be but so hard to make a story. It can't be, I mean, I make my own stories all the time. Mm-hmm. It can't be that hard to just make the animations. I know what I want to see. So why not just do both of them and put it together? Will it take forever? Sure, that's fine, but I'll do it. So I've downloaded the Blender app and that's as far as I've gotten. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of what stopped me, one fear of, am I going to finish that? Is it going to be good? And then the imposter syndrome of, you can't do that. There, all of these other people that have been out here, you can't do that. Mm. Are you good enough to do that? Mm. Is that your is that your wheelhouse? Mm. You went to school and got two degrees to be an engineer, and you want to be an animator? Mm. It's like the constant. Like, it's, I don't want to say berating of yourself in your head, but you know that that secondary question of yeah, I want to do this, but do you? You got to believe in the story that you're trying to tell like like you got to believe in that story like because you're just your life so you're writing the story Mm -hmm. so you have to believe in it and really go after it and I think it's like not fear not fear possibly looking crazy or looking foolish or possibly like because it's like that's the that's the one thing it's like am I gonna put in all of this work and then it's not received I'm gonna put in all of this work and it's going to be bad. I'm going to put in all this work and it's not going to, as, as the people say, give what it's supposed to give. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a, a mountain of fear. And then the imposter syndrome of you're not good enough for that. Or you're not, you're not, supposed, you don't, you're not supposed to do that. Like, you're not supposed to be here. That's for, that's for the community of people who write anime, the community of people who make cartoons. That's not your field. Mm. <laughs> But the thing is, you've already left your field because you was an engineer and you and you and you're trying to get you're trying to transition out of that field into a whole new field. So all this I'm not even new. working in either one of my degree fields. I have two degrees, one in civil engineering, one in biomedical engineering. I do telecom. They don't even make a front. <laughs> Neither one of them. 
So, I'm already not working there. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, was, you can't go wrong. <laughs> it's just another step. It's another yeah. story to tell, to be told another way. And no matter what happens with it, you're going to be better on the other side of it because you've had, you got that experience now. So it's like pursuing it. And that's where a lot of people get messed up is kind of, they're counting themselves out before they even start. So it's like, nah, that mountain sure is tall. You get stuck on the what if, like, what if I did that? And you just stay there at the what if I did that, as opposed to, okay, I'm going to do a part of that and see what it feels like and then keep doing. I think that also, like, the stopping and smell the roses thing, because sometimes stopping and thinking about how far you've already come can be like, oh, I was a completely different dude all them years ago that I mm-hmm. from, from where I am now. So who's to say I can't be even further along, you know, after doing this or years from now. And another thing that has came into the stopping and smelling the roses is I have been entering into a creative field where the people that I admire and the people that I want to aspire to be are 10, 15, 20 years older than me. And I'm expecting to get where they are at 28. And I, <laughs> that's why I had to stop. I was like, you're not 40, Randy. You're not <laughs> 55 or 60 randy you're 28 sure it would be great to get there now but you're not even 30 yet that's the part that i'm glad i didn't think about that while i was talking because i would have fussed you out earlier in this podcast talking about <laughs> this nonsense and you ain't even 30 yet you talking all this stuff you are doing have done and are gonna do and you ain't even 30 yet boy you don't get out of here and get the writing and get the animating. Yeah, hey, I got it. I got a year and a year and four months till thirty. But yeah, that's that's been the hard. That's been the the hard stop of like telling myself you can't be mad at where you aren't because you technically some places you aren't supposed to be there yet, or you aren't there because you haven't experienced that portion of life to get there. Mm. There are certain things I can't write about because I ain't experienced it. I, I mean, I can write about it, but it's gonna it might not come off the correct way because I don't know that portion of life. Mm. Mm. That's real. I haven't experienced certain things. I haven't I haven't been in certain places. There's pockets that are still waiting for me to get there. Then I can delve in a little bit more. And then the more stuff you do, those will become experiences that you can pull from later mm-hmm. on. Like, so it's it's just it's it's weird how the brain works, especially with the creative mind where it's like, you you stop yourself from doing something out of fear that it's not gonna work out. But by you not doing it, you guarantee that it's not gonna work out because you're not gonna do anything. No effort, no gain, no harm, no loss. Facts, that's that's facts. Randy, I didn't know you was doing all that, man. That's another reason why I had this podcast so I can find out what y'all doing. And I was like, what randy writing scripts let me let me dig into this yeah i'll be i'll be i've been extremely quiet about it because i during the pandemic uh i guess backstory since we're here uh i lost my job in march of 2020 in the Mm -hmm. pandemic and i was like wow i guess that was also a stop and smell the roses moment of i've worked every year since i was 15 until i was 26 and i was like oh this is what it feels like to not have a job Okay, cool. Now let's experience, like, for lack of better words, how it is to be a bum. So I kind of bummed it out for a little bit. I didn't do nothing. I sat outside, like, at the pool and stuff. I was chilling. Pandemic was going on around outside. I was enjoying life doing nothing. And then eventually I found writing. I dug into it, uh, got introduced to a production company, figured out how it worked from the inner workings of working with them, uh, did some stuff um, writing wise in a writer's room with them that's coming to fruition i have ndas can't talk too much um so yeah that's coming to fruition and then i also picked up a camera and i was like i've been touching a camera for years why not see if i can do something with it i don't got a job i still need money so let's play around with it and figure out we can take some pictures started taking some pictures people started finding out word of mouth bing 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 started getting more of those i played around with the camera a little bit i was like well i think i might be able to do video a little bit better than doing photos started picking up that started working people music videos and that turned into music videos doing ads for people doing 
for one girl that was in my cohort for grad school, she wanted a to make a set of courses, build her courses for her and recorded the whole entire thing, edited it up, chopped it up, boom. So I just kept playing around with things, ended up talking to one of the people at the job that I got after the pandemic was over with and ended up doing a whole video and photo shoot that was for my company, including the senator of North Carolina. So mm-hmm. it was like, hmm. I just kept talking to people. It just so perhaps he threw in that I did photography and video and then things just kept rolling. I threw in that I did scripts and then things just kept rolling. So I got pinged for a couple of things here and there and I just kept working in silence. So nobody really knew what was going on unless I posted about it. And people was like, you, you, you do what? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and that was my facial expression. <laughs> like, yeah, I do a little, you know, a little something. Man, you out here doing greatness. You out here being great and stuff. So I just, I just need you to understand that you're going to continue to do great. And you're going to continue to have great things happen because you're going to make them happen. And that I am incredibly proud to, to know you, sir. Like you are doing good stuff and I am all here to support and, you know, motivate and do whatever I can to support your endeavors, sir. Much appreciated, B.O.B. Much appreciated to have a, have a good mentor friend across the way. Listen, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I'm here for you. But I appreciate you coming on this podcast, Randy. I am just because you about you got to kick off the new season, so thank oh, you. Oh, I'm the kickoff. Oh yeah, I'm I'm kicking it out with you. I'm, ki- oh, I'm word, kicking okay. it off with you. Uh, I appreciate your time. Let the people know where they can find you on social media and whatever you got going on. I'm about to say I'm I'm kind of be I I kind of untapped from social media, but um Randy Hill on Facebook and on Instagram is at head over underscore Hill H E A D O V A R underscore my last name, Hill, H-I-L-L. All right. And that's going to do it for this episode. Make sure everybody that's listening and watching you like, share, and subscribe. Share it with your people. And remember, as you go along in life, teach as you learn and inspire as you do. See y'all next time.